Well guys, it's early in the morning on day 19 of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. I'm starting this video off a little bit different because we're going back to visit that raspberry jam that I made, I think it's about four weeks now, it was in a Just Can It video, I'll link it above. In that video, we were testing out Pomona's pectin for the first time because I found it locally here in Canada and I was super excited. Now, in the end, I was a little bit disappointed because a lot of it didn't seal up, didn't seem like it stayed good, it looked moldy, there were so many things, but I had some great comments on it and it made me think, let's give it another shot. So, in this video, we're going to visit the Blackberry Patch again because I just can't resist. Everything looks so amazing this year, but I got no more room in the freezer. So, we're going to make some Blackberry jelly. Not today, but I thought since I splurged and I bought bread because my friend Ange sent me home with enough tomatoes to have a tomato sandwich because my tomatoes are still doing nothing. And I have four slices left over. So Chris and I are going to open one of these honey uh, raspberry jams from the Pomona's pectin so that I can feel assured going out and getting these blackberries that if I make blackberry jelly with them with a lot less sugar than normal, it's going to be worth it. So. Let's open up this honey and see, well, it's not honey, it's raspberry jam made with honey, and see how good it is. So here we have the honey one, which is still sealed, and a sugar one that we opened earlier. And, okay, there's a little bit of guck on the rim, but the jam itself still looks amazing, and it smells incredible. So we're willing to roll the dice with that one for sure. But let's open the honey one. That was a pretty good pop. The question is, will it be moldy? No! I will admit, I bought really cheap lids and they're garbage. Don't ever buy cheap lids, people. But look! Let's just dig in and make sure it doesn't have something jump out at us. I'm going to give it a taste test quickly. It smells really good. And tastes really good. So, we're going to splurge and have it on toast this morning. And I think we'll be making some blackberry jam this video. Not jam, sorry, blackberry jelly, because I don't like all the seeds. Well, guys, I have to admit, having the jam on toast this morning was such a treat. We actually did two slices of toast, and we did the honey on one and the sugar on the other. And both were fantastic, and it's funny, because Chris preferred one and I preferred the other. So, I don't know, maybe we'll roll with this and try again. I went and got some more Pomona's pectin just this morning, so that we could uh, move on with making some blackberry jelly in this video. I have to go pick those blackberries and I have yet to have a break in the rain, but we'll see what happens. But until then, we are going to work on something that I actually jumped ahead with last night, but I didn't document. And that is that lamb and black bean chili that I made last week at my friend Angie's. Now, unfortunately that didn't result in you guys really getting the recipe and the how-to. So I'd like to do it again because this is one of our favorites and I'd like to have a bit more. So we're gonna go through this. I'm gonna show you the process. Again, this is a pressure canning recipe, but it is a fantastic one. If you don't have lamb, it will work just fine with beef as well. So it always turns out amazing. So let's get started on it. So this again is another recipe out of one of my favorite cookbooks, Simmering Suppers. This is an oldie but a goodie and you often find it in Canadian thrift stores. Honestly, I would pick it up. Now these aren't actually pressure canning recipes in here, but with a few tweaks, you can certainly make most recipes pressure canning. So that's what we're doing with this stew. Now what I have done is I've skipped ahead and I have soaked my beans overnight and most of today. So I don't know how much cooking off they're really gonna need before we get going with this chili. And I defrosted six pounds of lamb meat ground. Now you could also use stewing meat for this recipe as well. It really is up to you and what your preference are. I just have a lot of ground meat and I find it super simple. So first step we're going to do is get that meat into the frying pan and cook it off and drain out all that extra oil and then we'll bring it back to go through all the rest of the ingredients. Now as our meat's cooking away we're going to soak our beans in a real low heat bath. Now not simmering, but kind of simmering, if that makes any sense. Now this recipe does call for four and a half cups of black beans. Now I did the last batch with all black beans, but I really wanted to use up all those rogue beans that we've grown over the years that have just kind of all been bunged into one pot because we had a little bit left over, a little bit left over. So as you can see, and it looks so pretty, a big mixture of beans going into this one. It'll still work. Black beans do have a little pizzazz to them and they hold their texture a bit, so that's why I don't want to simmer these as long as I would normally. With the black beans, normally you'd keep these at a simmer, never boil, just a simmer, 
for about 30 minutes and then drain them and add your cooked meat once you were done. We're gonna probably do it just for the 15 minutes or so while our meat is cooking. And that way they're not overcooked when we get them into the pressure canner. So we're browning off nicely. As many of you know, I can't stand to waste anything. So we are scooping off this fat to make lard. As soon as I get a moment here, I'm going to show you the lard off of that taco meat that we did, what was that, five days ago now? It looks incredible. So let's get this off here. I'm using a little like funnel -y thing. It's got a mesh on the bottom. Love this tool, definitely. And then I just put the meat back and put it back in and get the next round. So we'll keep tipping and dipping until this is done. So I'll hold up here and you can see there is the nice lard and that's all the water and wastage that you want to get rid of. Now, sometimes it's a little bit hard to separate those when you're getting it out. I basically kind of scoop and pour and scoop and pour until I get down to where I'm starting to get a little bit of that watery substance in there. And then I use a subscriber's trick. Once it's had enough time to cook, don't do it right away because sometimes the seal does not hold on that hot oil, but flip it over once it's had a little bit of time to cool but hasn't gone solid yet. And all, I'm not gonna open the lid right now, but you can just kind of see in there, all, all that, anything that was in that lard sinks to the bottom because the lard rises to the top. So by flipping it over, all I have to do is unscrew that lid over top of the sink, clean it out, and I've got beautiful clean lard to use for cooking, baking, anything really. I find it fantastic. I know this is lamb, but I'm sure beef would work exactly the same way. Anyways, now back to your regular programming. All right, so I've drained those beans. I'm gonna just put a little bit of this lard back in here. You can see our pot is nice and hot. And we're going to put in our three cups of onions. That's what I always say is large, large onion should be a cup. So we're gonna get that in there. And then next you need five cloves of garlic. Now I'm using a whole bunch of little old odds and sods. So it looks like I'm putting more than five, but really it still equals about the same. Let me just press that in there. And you see that garlic in there. We just want to get these onions a little bit started and then we're going to add our meat and our beans. It really is quite a simple recipe because there's very little in it. Meat, beans, onions, spices, tomatoes. Really, that's it. Uh, so I think our onions are pretty much to that point now. So I'm going to put my meat back in and my beans and I'll bring you back for the next part. I think I mentioned already, but I might not have. So you need four and a half cups of beans. Then you soak them overnight and then cook them off a little bit. So now really that everything is pretty much in there, all we have left to do is add our spices and then our tomato product. Now, one thing I'm gonna to touch on here quickly is with the tomato product, I have one quart of Italian style diced tomatoes and one quart of tomato juice. Now, the recipe does call for three quarts, but I find I don't like it to be too runny. So I'm going to opt for doing a tomato paste in it at the end if I feel I need it. But I'm only going to put the two in to start and then we'll discuss that at the end. But my plan right now is just to go through all the ingredients really quick here with the spices and get them in and then we'll bring you back. One and a half tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of pepper, five tablespoons of regular chili powder. Sometimes I heap them a little bit so just to get a bit more flavor in there three good sized tablespoons of ground ginger. I love when it comes already mashed up rather than having to do it myself. Two teaspoons of thyme. Now I do have thyme fresh out in the garden as well, but I find this works better. And then I just dehydrate some more. Now the recipe calls for uh, four teaspoons of marjoram. I don't have marjoram, so I'm going to use uh, oregano instead. It's a pretty close replacement. And I grow a lot of oregano here and it grows super well, so I often use it as a substitute. Two teaspoons of allspice. And the last thing that goes in this is hot chili powder. Now, I use hot chili powder, not cayenne pepper, but you can sub in cayenne pepper as well. Now, I'm going to go with two and a half teaspoons in this recipe, mostly because I know my hot pepper spice and 
I've done this recipe before. I would suggest you work with what works for you in yours. Start gradual, taste test, and see if you want more because you don't want to go too spicy or it makes it very unenjoyable, right? So we're going to get our hot pepper in and then it's liquid time. So the other thing that I forgot to mention that goes in here is wine. A nice dark red rich wine. I prefer Merlot for this. Uh, I'm not a connoisseur but that's the one that I like the most. So we need to put three cups of red wine in first. Just a little taste test for me. Oh yeah. That is perfect for this. Super good. Love it. So as you can see here, that liquid still hasn't come to anywhere that we can see it just with the wine. So we're going to add our Italian style tomatoes first and then our tomato juice and see how we do. Now I'm just going to give it a little stir to see where we're sitting before I put all of that liquid in. Keep trying to get myself in here. So I'll be honest with you, I'm going to stop there for a moment. I'm going to get this up to a boil and see if um, I really need the liquid because as you can see it's really starting to form on the top and I don't know if I need it. I don't want this to be runny that I have to thicken it when I take it out of the jar, right? So we're going to bring this to a boil now. It needs to boil for 10 minutes before I can it. So while that's happening I'm going to get my jars ready and the pressure canner and we'll bring it back when it's time to kind of taste test at that point and we'll see what else we need. All right guys, so it just came to a boil and I added a little bit more tomato juice. So I've got about three quarters of that tomato juice jar gone and I think I now feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to do a taste test, make sure we don't need to add any more spices. And then I'm gonna turn this up and get her to a boil so that we can jar. Let's see, I don't want a bean because they won't be cooked yet. Okay, here we are. It's not even super hot, I don't think, right now. Oh yeah. Wow. That is really, really good. Oh, I know what we're having for supper tonight. Perfect. So I'm going to get this. To, you can see my, my lids back here are starting to steam. I got to turn them off. So I'm going to turn this up, get it boiling, give it a few more minutes because it was already boiling and I don't want to overcook those beans. And then we're going to get it into these wide mouth jars into the canner. I'm using one quart, so we've got to do 90 minutes at 10 pounds pressure. Well, in the spirit of every bit counts, I'm back outside. I'm doing a little bit of a harvest from our blueberry patch, which is interesting because we've been harvesting blueberries for a month and a half. And here we go. As you can see, these high bush blueberries don't ripen all at the same time. So we've been out doing little mini harvests and then once we get a harvest, we take it downstairs and freeze it. Now we have a few different kinds, but these blueberries, which I can't remember what variety this is, but they have huge berries, which is pretty awesome. It certainly looks a little worse for wear, but it's really nice having this patch of blueberries so close to the house. You can see it there in the background because we can really easily keep an eye on it and sort of see when it's time to come out and harvest more berries. Well, that's my harvest for tonight. And I will admit we're pretty much to the end of this harvest. So it doesn't look like much, but it does add up because I think we're almost up to three bags of blueberries or three big freezer bags worth in the freezer from our little patch that's not that old. That's not that bad. And every little bit does count. Honest to goodness, guys, the rain could give it a rest any day now. I did not get out to pick berries today because, as you can see, it's pouring rain again. Honestly, we haven't had a two-hour break from the rain in what seems like days. Uh, you wouldn't think that I lived in eastern Ontario. But anyways, so instead we've decided we're going to make some more of that red Thai sauce because we liked it so much and we're going to have it for dinner tonight. So we're back out to get some more lemongrass and over yonder some more green onions and as i'm out here getting our lemongrass i see a whole lot more peppers ready to be picked i'm not doing that in the rain but i can see that tomorrow is gonna be all about freezing peppers again well guys we braved the elements went out in the rain and we got that lemongrass and those green onions that we need to make this paste again 
Honestly, it's so good. I'm not going to go through all the details. I'm just letting you know we're putting more of it away. And I'm going to come back at the end of this video and show you just how we made it into a meal. So I'm going to get it made. I'm going to get dinner ready and I'll bring you back when it's time to taste test and eat. All right, so we're on to the good part. We're frying up veggies. Tonight we are making red Thai curry and I'm using noodle beans harvested my first bunch of noodle beans this recipe calls for green beans like those you know long I don't know the kind that we don't grow <laughs> but these noodle beans will work perfect for this so in this recipe it's a whole bunch of vegetables sweet potatoes all sorts of good stuff and then it has one of our little containers of our red Thai curry paste that we just made in the last video and I just made again in this video even though I didn't go into too much detail so if you're interested in that recipe, you're going to have to go back to last Every Bit Counts Challenge video to get the full synopsis on everything that is in there. Like I say, I didn't go into it too much on this one, but we're going to get this cooked up. We're having it with rabbit meat tonight and on some brown rice, very minimal amount because I am watching how much of that sort of thing I consume, but that doesn't mean everybody else has to behave that way too. So we'll bring you back when it's all ready and dished up so you can see we'll tease you with just how amazing it's going to be all right guys dinner is ready and look at that oh all those fresh vegetables and everything it looks so good this has got rabbit meat in it it is a red thai curry um you can make this a little bit soupier by putting more chicken broth in we went with uh, not too soupy and uh, mostly because we're not bulking it out with too much rice as you can see there's only a little section of rice in my bowl but we're going to give it a taste test here. It's going to be so good. It's going to be hot. Mm. That's pretty good. Anyways, as I said, the uh, paste available in the previous Every Bit Counts Challenge and definitely stay tuned this fall. We're going to run a series of fall cooking and I'm going to do this curry recipe as one of my uh, videos. So definitely stay tuned to that once the uh, Every Bit Counts Challenge is all over. And stay tuned in this video still because we got one more day yet of putting stuff away. Well guys, yesterday was day two of this video and we got some more of that paste made, that red Thai curry paste. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it was fantastic. We had it in dinner, as you saw. Mm, excellent, that will be coming as a recipe with our fall cooking. Today is the 21st, last day of this video, and we are back on the peppers. I showed you a little clip of the peppers out in the garden. These are the ones I picked this morning, and an I, there was more out there, but I didn't want to pick too much because we had all of this here to deal with, and there's still some more in the fridge, but they're holding really well, so I don't want to freeze them until I absolutely need to, just in case I want to make something in particular, right? So... We need to get this bunch here bagged up and in the freezer so that they don't go to waste. I've already had to chop the ends off of some because they've kind of gotten spoiled in the fridge or in the container sitting on the counter. You know how it is. Things keep coming in and there's not enough time to deal with them. So we're going to get all of this chopped up. I am so pleased with the peppers from the garden. They are looking fantastic and of course coming in like mad after we buy the other peppers, right? Isn't that how it works? So we're going to get these all chopped up, bagged same way we did last time and in the freezer. And then we're going to come back and finish off the day making that lemon pepper seasoning. I had to take it out of the dehydrator because I had to move on to dehydrating some other things. So it's in a jar for now, but we're going to put the rest of the ingredients in this and get her made. So with the kids both working full time, we managed to get this done lickety split. Three more two pound bags to go into the freezer. That gives us a nine total. So 18 pounds of peppers already put away for the winter. And like I showed you, they just keep coming now out of the garden and we still have a whole ton of green ones yet to ripen. Uh, so it's going to be a busy pepper season, but you know what? Peppers are one thing that I really wanted to get right in the garden this year because I do think that this works for most of our needs over the winter months. We love to just grab them out of the freezer. They're usually going into a stir fry or an omelet or something like that. And this works great. Even on pizza, they work fantastic. And it means I don't have to buy them during the expensive season, which is awesome. So now it's time to move on to making this lemon pepper seasoning. 
All right, guys, so we're rounding off this video, the 21st day of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, and we're finishing off with the lemon pepper seasoning as promised. So what we have, of course, is our dehydrated lemon peel, right? And a coffee grinder. Boom, coffee grinder. And then I'm gonna kind of just go through the rest of these ingredients really quick. Half a cup of our lemon peels, quarter cup of black peppercorns, quarter cup of coarse salt, one teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of the garlic powder. And basically, the lid goes on, and... So I've got it all ground up here. There was a half cup of our lemon peels, quarter cup of black pepper, quarter cup of coarse salt, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I have a little bit of my lemon peels left over. And I'll be honest, I just taste tested this. It's not lemony enough. These peels, I even just ate some of them just as they were. They're not super lemon tasting. I'm not sure if it was because I used discounted lemons. Uh, maybe I over dehydrated them. I, I don't know if you can do that. Um, I like it to be dry because I want it to, uh, you know, keep in my jar. But I've got about a quarter cup left in here. I'm just going to grind that on its own and add it to the seasoning. So basically I'm doing three quarters of a cup of my lemon peels in with the salt, pepper and other spices. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to taste test it. I'll bring it back. So we're going to just give it a little test now. I can, let me just focus it here. I don't know if you can see in there. It's got a nice consistency for me. I like it quite powdery so that it really coats my chicken. Right, let's just taste it. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's pretty good now. I like it. Now, the one thing I will say is you can add salt to this to your own taste. I love salt. I know that that's terrible, but when you're using just a little bit at a time sprinkled on things, it's not a big deal. Now that I've got the three quarters of a cup of that uh, lemon peel in there, I definitely can taste it, which is what I was going for. So I'm super pleased with this. This little container here is probably enough to last us for the year. So until the next time I find lemons in the store, that's our lemon pepper seasoning. Day 19, 20, and 21 have come and gone. The weather has been absolutely horrible. As much as I promised jelly, whoops, jelly, at the beginning with the Pomona's pectin, we haven't had a chance to go and pick berries because it has been rain, rain, rain. But we did get a few things sorted in the meantime. I got my seven jars of the lamb chili done. Super pleased about this one. I don't know if we'll make it again yet because I now have 10 jars in the pantry. So that's a lot for us for now. And this is something I can make over the winter time, no problem. Another little bonus is we made a bunch more of that red Thai curry sauce. Super pleased with that. We even put it into a meal as you saw. Mm, it was wonderful. One thing I will say is I could have made it a little bit spicier. Those peppers weren't as much punch as I thought they were going to be. So definitely on the next round, which there will be a next round, I will be adding a little bit more of those Auroras. And we finished it off with lemon pepper seasoning. And super pleased about this because that's a year's supply for us. I don't have to worry about it again. If I happen to see lemons on sale again, I'd probably get them just to stock up. But it's not required, right? That's what I, I love that feeling when you just, something is off the list. Doesn't mean you won't do more, but it's off the list. It's like the berries. I have, whoa, <laughs> I have plenty of berries in the freezer. I don't need more in the freezer, but if I can pick some and make them into product right away now, that's just a bonus, right? Which means those ones in the freezer stay there for smoothies and things like that. In the long run, still a productive couple days, and hopefully the sun is out today as we end this video, so hopefully, the next three days, we will get some berries done and use that Pomona's pectin. And who knows what else we'll get up to. I have a list of about 14 things that I'd like to get done for you in August. But hey, it's already the uh, 21st. So I don't know how much we're actually going to get. It's definitely going to creep into September because still no tomatoes. Not a one. Not even my cherry tomatoes. They're covered in green tomatoes, but no other tomatoes. So stay tuned to see if that even happens in August. Otherwise, we'll be doing a canning series on tomatoes in September.